All right, welcome back. Today, the Supreme Court heard arguments over two social media laws in the states of Florida and Texas that sought to bar the major, major social media companies from making editorial judgments. Those companies argue today that the laws violate the First Amendment. Now, the court's decision is expected by June. So what are we supposed to make of a lot of the noise that is surrounding this case? Steyerwalt here to break it all down. Chris? Oh, I didn't know I was going to have to be that good. Okay, well, we'll try. <laughs> On this day in 2015, two llamas, Kanitka and Laney, escaped on a visit to an assisted living facility outside of Phoenix, Arizona. For three mwah, magnificent hours that afternoon, the renegade llamas tracked by news helicopters overhead delighted the nation as they evaded law enforcement and animal control, darting in and out of traffic and generally being hilarious. <laughs> Before some cowboys finally lassoed them. That's right, America, it's the llamaversary. Uh, Kaknita and Laney became instant celebrities, spawning a tsunami of social media content and the kind of roadblock television coverage usually reserved for natural disasters and tragedies. So what does a goofy news story from nine years ago have to do with us? Well, that year, the percentage of American adults on social media hit 65%, up from 7% when the technologies broke through a decade before. The llamas proved the power of users on platforms like Twitter, now called X, to drive news coverage and the national discussion. It was a fluffy preview of something much less tame. The 2016 presidential election, the first one entirely in the connected age, unleashed a toxic stream of hate, anger, disinformation, disinformation and lies. We can blame Russian or Chinese meddling for some, but if we're being honest, we know that Americans didn't need much encouragement to tear each other apart. And we in the news business amplified that problem. We're chasing clicks and rage revenue by following social media mobs into the darkest corners of political life. Instead of trying to lead audiences to the truth, too many, too many journalists were following the herd. Two close elections and a pandemic later, it turned out to be a surprisingly short trip from a couple of leaping llamas to rage and riots. Less surprising is that Americans tuned out. In 2016, 51% of, of U.S. adults said they followed the news all or most of the time. Now that number is much, much lower across every age and demographic group. Burned out by mob-fueled outrage, they tuned out, and I don't blame them. Maybe now we know a little better. What looked like massive movements online were really driven by fanatical groups of super users. The top 10% of Twitter users were generating 92% of posts. Social media can be good or bad, like any tool, but it's not real life. Today, the Supreme Court heard arguments about state laws that try to put governments in charge of policing political speech. The measures in question smack of the kind of pandering to addicted online audiences that, the that took the U.S. from the lovable hijinks of some llamas to a violent flash mob storming the U.S. Capitol. Technologically and constitutionally obtuse, the laws seem unlikely to stand anyway. The better remedy would be that this election year, we in the press show what we've learned. Number one. The same human nature that has afflicted us for 10,000 years is no less and no more present in the digital age than it was before. Technology changed how we communicate, but not who we are. Number two, intensity is not the same as popular sentiment. In a country with 161 million registered voters, a social media f uh, firestorm among a self-selected group of obsessive tells us very little about what normal people think. And number three, the news media is every bit as much villain as victim in the story of social media radicalizing politics. We have the power as individuals and institutions to choose how we use these tools. Maybe more journalists can show our independence and judgment and start to reverse that long slide in news consumption by offering you our best instead of chasing the worst. And maybe, if you will forgive me, kind of, more llamas less dramas. <laughs> Steyerwalt breaks it down. Wow. I told you he wanted to is talk about what, llamas. Is that, is that what the Sunday show is going to be like? Uh, I, I, I hope so. What's that? the Sunday show going to be like? Fantastic. Uh, yeah, we need more of that. Yeah. Llama content, llama <laughs> facing content. <laughs> I don't know what sort of petting zoo we're going to have to have in here to get people to watch it, but uh, I'll, do, I'll do what it takes. All right. Hey, real, know what's a, what's a, I'm sorry, go right ahead. No, I was just going to ask you real quick, what, what do we expect out of the Supreme Court here with this decision? In this I don't think you can prove a negative, and so I don't think they're going to do anything in connection to changing how these states can regulate these uh, these social media companies. I, I, Chris, I think you're right, but it's a thin line between chasing the positive and going with the herd and the negative because you're in the, the media is in the business of covering what's going on, whether it's on, online or otherwise. Totally, and these are prudential tests, right? For mm -hmm. us as journalists, 
What we have to try to do is use our best judgment and mm -hmm. use our experience to come to terms. But what was happening 10 years ago was social media was new and it blew our circuit boards, right? We were like, oh my gosh, look at this. That tweet's got 30,000 right. retweets. Right. 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 Well, when you only have as many people as would go to a high school football game mm -hmm. uh, engaging with something, it looks really big when it's right here on your phone. Right. But again, in a country with 161 registered, 161 million right. registered voters, yeah. it's not that much. It's Thank you for watching and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.